And good afternoon, Whale Coin Talk community. My name is Noah. This is the final AMA of today. We are with Trust Recruit, um, and I'm here with their CEO, Lila. Uh, Lila, welcome. We're happy to have you. And you know, before we get started talking about the project, how about you go ahead and give us a quick background about who you are and your career path, your time in crypto. We'd like to get to know you before we start um, talking about what you're building. Yeah, sure. So, hi, uh, guys. Uh, I'm uh, Laila. I'm uh, the CEO of Trust Recruit. So, I've been in the, I would say, in the data and AI for, I would say, 15 years. So, uh, I've been working for big corporation for 25 years, and then I decided to create my own company. So, actually, I have two businesses. One about the data analytics and anything related to the data lifecycle management. So coming from the AI background, and um, the other is trust recruit. So how we come up with this idea is basically we uh, struggle finding the right resources while we were trying to hire some talents. So basically we got some resumes and then when we had the person in, in front of us, it was kind of different from what it was written. So uh, then we decided to take the risk and uh, integrate those people uh, in the organization. It seems to be a very bad decision because uh, after four to six months, we have seen that those people were not fitting with the culture and along with the skills that they say that they had. So um, to, um, to kind of um, figure out how we can solve that problem, we just decided to see how uh, AI can match the different um, uh, jobs description that we have with the with the job seekers, and then I decided to um, to work with Anuhai, uh, that is holding the um, uh, blockchain part for many years. Uh, he's been working for exchanges. He uh, built um, different companies also on blockchain. He launched some exchanges too, and um, and helped some uh, people launching their uh, crypto um, services. So I have decided to uh, join our forces uh, from my AI background and his um, blockchain background to uh, come up with Trust Recruit. So basically who we are, it's um, so uh, Anurag has been in the blockchain part since 2015. And uh, he's a uh, graduate from Stanford. And uh, when he was uh, in Stanford, he just met all different people that were discussing about um, about blockchain. And then he de he decided to dig more about that. And then uh, this is how he gets his expertise. So he has more than eight years in the blockchain. And concerning myself, I did an executive MBA in Chicago in 2015. And uh, then I decided to uh, get back with uh, all the experience that we have for big corporation to launch Trust Recruit with him. I am based out of Paris. He is uh, from uh, uh, India and he has also offices in uh, London and San Francisco. And we are also based out of New York and uh, some uh, other location, mainly in Europe and some of them in Africa. So this is uh, so the combination between two of us. Is kind of um, a very interesting experience and expertise that we just put uh, for Trust Recruit. We have decided to go with the first advantage by uh, combining AI, NFT, and DeFi all together to make sure that we will definitely be disruptive in uh, 10 years in the hasn't been disrupted so far and for which the volume of data that we have today uh, regarding the resume is um, increasing like uh, 60% every year. And uh, basically, the idea is really to come up with a crypto project that is a real use case in a vertical industry for HR recruitment. So, Wow. That's, I mean, that's quite the impressive resume on both your ends. And um, it seems like you had a lucrative career before crypto even. Uh, I'm curious to know more about how the project works. And I would want to lead with the question, why would an employer or recruiter want to purchase an NFT of, uh, of a resume in the first place? Yeah, so uh, basically uh, the idea is very simple, is um, when you go with your, uh, I would say, skills on your resume and you put that on LinkedIn, for example, you are not paid for that. You don't have any credit regarding the fact that whether or not you're going to put some accurate information on your LinkedIn. So maybe you can... You can give all that data to LinkedIn Corporation that is using that data for their own purposes. So basically what we have decided would 
be for the job seeker and the um, um, freelancer standpoint is to see how we can uh, credit them with the uh, incentives for, for them to uh, give their uh, accurate data and make sure that their uh, resume is uh, still um, up to date. So basically we have um, put in place the play to earn that we do know on the gaming, like Axie Infinities, for example, where um, 70% or 80% of the profit goes to the, uh, to the uh, players. So we have decided to uh, get the same analogy for having that done for the HR. So for the job seekers and the, um, and the freelancers, they're going to be paid every time they're going to uh, have their resume viewed in the marketplace. So they're going to get two US dollars for every, every view. And they will be incentive to uh, have uh, some up-to-date information in their resume. So basically, this is the idea uh, for the uh, job seeker and the um, and the uh, freelancer standpoint. And for the employers, is basically imagine you have um, any employers that want to get the best of breed for the uh, top talents, and they are unable to find them because they have a limited database. Uh, in their own company. So imagine if all the different employers can go and pick up the right talents in the NFT marketplace, and for every one of them, it's 100% accurate. So they're going to be uh, very much interested to get the right information in the, in the resume and get the right talent in front of them when they decide to hire them. So this is basically the story behind. Then we're going to get the, the money from the um, employers on a revenue um, a monthly uh, fee. So it's going to be more or less the same as what Indeed.com is, is, uh, is having today in terms of business model. And we're going to give back to the uh, job seekers, um, I would say 70% of that amount. Uh, for having them uh, being able to use the marketplace for uh, having some passive income uh, for them. So it's going to be a win-win um, solution and everybody's going to be uh, happy with that. So this is basically what we have decided to go with Trust Recruit. I think that Anurag just joined us. Anurag, are you here? Anurag, if you're here, raise your hand and I can unmute you. I think I can see him. Uh, Anura, can you raise your hand? Yeah. yeah. Just the, uh... Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, I think there was a technical issue at my end. Sorry for, uh, you know, uh, being a little late. Yeah, no worries. And uh, Lila, 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 excuse me, Lila did a great job of giving a brief background on both of your careers and how you ended up where you are. And we were just getting into the the fundamentals of trust recruit i led with the question a why you know why would an employer or recruiter purchase an nft and lila was just breaking that down um now that i have you here i follow up with the next question and lila thank you for that breakdown um, you're welcome my next question really is what are some in lila's explained some but what are some very specific benefits of turning people's resumes into nfts and you mentioned the monetization of um of that person's data, especially for the um, individual putting up the resumes. I I'm just trying to wrap my head around why a employer would, why employer would want to pay money to simply view an NFT when they can do it for free on LinkedIn. Yes. Um, so the reason why somebody would pay for that is because on LinkedIn, uh, the information that people see as per the various stats out there, uh, and these are credible sources and multiple research uh, point out to the fact that almost 40% of the information that's out there uh, has blatant lies, and people tend to embellish themselves when they present uh, on social platforms, either on LinkedIn or uh, on Indeed.com and elsewhere. So uh, what that means is when the employer shortlist somebody, uh, they have to first ensure that all the information is correct. So they have to go through that screening process where they try to, uh, you know, make sure that the information that's presented to what is actually uh, they're able to extract on the job seeker is accurate. And to even after that, they still have to hire third party service provider who do the background check on these employees, uh, you know, potential employees. 
So to circumvent both these problems, one, to avoid the excessive cost of third-party service providers in terms of verifying people's resume or general backgrounds, and two, just the general time frame. Uh, so on average, for an entry-level position, it can take up to 45 days and about $4,200 to fill an open position. And yet, almost 46% of these people uh, are asked to go within the first 18 months because of various reasons uh, in terms of the information that was presented. And this is all hard data out there. And to avoid all these things, uh, obviously, this third-party service providing industry has a spawn, uh, which tends to address some of these systemic problems. But again, it doesn't uh, sort of weed out completely, and that is the reason people are asked to leave. What we are trying to build here is actually an incentivized model where people on their own uh, honestly put their information there, uh, on the platform, and they can completely control that information, which means the information submitted on the blockchain is always under their control and custody. We don't get to see that. And whenever the verification process happens, it happens via zero encryption uh, API calls. And the answer is just a yes or a no to the information submitted and not what the information is. So information is always under the uh, job seekers control. And the incentive for them, to be honest, is that they start to you know, uh, make money, which is what Leela explained earlier on the monetization plan um, and the plans that we have out there. So that is, uh, we feel, a very strong reason for employees to actually use the platform, wherein they would be paying certain subscription fees to platforms like indeed.com and elsewhere uh, on the same or rather you know the initial entry cost is actually 50 percent lower than that uh, they would get much more valuable services than they would otherwise get on platforms like indeed.com got it and i'm all i'm, I'm trying to understand what is the ins or what is the incentive of them being honest on the trust recruit platform, like, can't they just put up false information on that as well and mint it into an NFT? No. Yeah. So uh, somebody would come to our platform. The way it works is that they have to submit information and then it goes through the verification process. So our verification process is somewhat similar to what the third party background checks, but also there are these API calls I mentioned about. Uh, so we are partnered with a number of uh, academic institutions, certifying bodies, uh, wherein people who have certain credentials from these institutions, we are able to verify using these zero-knowledge API calls. And then there is a manual process, and in this manual process, we basically check the years of work at a certain organization and some other bits which uh, individuals have declared. Of course, this is all under their consent. And uh, as I mentioned, information is with them. And once they agree that they want to go through this process, then the team would get involved and they would uh, you know, sort of uh, make sure that the information presented is actually accurate. And once that uh, process is cleared, that's when they have the ability to win the NFT. So they can't straight away go and win the NFT. Before that, they have to clear the verification process. Understood. So it's quite the vigorous uh, verification process. Uh, yeah, so basically, yeah. So basically, Please. they're going to be verified and they're going to be trustable, like within, I would say, um, uh, you know, uh, three to four days, where um, we're going to give the guarantee for the employers that 100% of the resume they're going to get from the marketplace is going to be 100% accurate. And for the job seeker side, it's going to be like they can earn some money while um, like uh, doing something else. So they're going to get some money uh, because the NFT is in the marketplace and it has been um, um, verified, checked by Trust Recruit. So it's going to be a kind of a stamp, additional stamp, that if the, any employers want to see their resume, then it, they, they're better off going to the marketplace instead of going to any, any other place because it's going to benefit the job seeker and the employer by, by themselves altogether. So this wow. is basically yeah. the idea behind. And I didn't, I had no idea that, that this was happening so frequently where someone gets hired based on false credentials and it ends up costing an employer hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm not sure the exact amount, but I'm just, I'm ballparking in yeah, my own exact, head here. <laughs> exact amount is 200% of the annual compensation. Wow. So twice the, yes. So <laughs> that's the actual number. 
So the employer has an incentive of paying, let's say, I don't know, 0.5 ETH just to, and they're paying simply to view the resume, right? That's it. It's just to see what the yes. contents of the, the pr uh, prospective employee are, um, the credentials yes, so of the what prospective employee. Yeah. What you're doing is, one, we're giving them peace of mind in terms of what they're getting is uh, what's on paper is what they're getting. That's number one. Number two, uh, the recruitment process takes almost 45, 50 days. We are literally, you know, cutting short that entire time frame from 45 days to literally four or five days, depending on how quickly they can schedule the interviews and move forward and make an offer. Uh, we are able to do that because all the additional work, wherever time gets consumed, various third parties or even their own due diligence, we are taking care of that bulk of due diligence on our platform. And we are ensuring that whatever information they get or the basis on which they are going to make decisions are already foolproof because, uh, you know, we are one verified to, you know, it's on the platform. They can obviously go and check basis the consent and uh, pretty much they can go ahead and hire people on that information basis. Got it. And what are some what are some of these data pools that you guys are pulling from and cross checking in the information that an individual submits through your protocol? So we are not, uh, you know, pulling information from any of the pools. So people come to the platform, they would submit their information, and uh, wherever their information. Uh, so, for instance, somebody went to uh, Kellogg or Stanford, and they're submitting that information. So. Uh, obviously, we are not partners with Stanford at this point, or even Kellogg, but some of the other institutions. So, the point being, if you are partners with these institutions, you can do API calls on their database, and it's an encrypted, zero knowledge, uh, you know, proof database uh, API calls, which means we don't see anything. You only get a yes or a no as an answer to a specific API call, and once that happens we are able to verify that yes this particular person with these credentials and on this and this date actually graduated uh, you know uh, in bs or you know whatever is a major and we are able to give that verification okay got it yeah i was i was trying to get just a high level explanation of what an api call is especially since since i'm sure a lot of our listeners don't don't know how those work, but that that so does. This it is for basically me. the the yes or no of if the information is correct, yes, or if this is um, correct, no. So this is basically the fact that you can go, for example, knock on the door of the school and say, "Hey, is this guy was um, uh, graduate from your school? Yes or no?" Same thing for the employers. Like, uh, did did this guy work from uh, X to to Y for that period for you? Yes or no? and getting the referrals to. As of today, all this first party part that is done by some people, human manual tasks for mm. verifying that take years, like like two to three. Hello? Tomorrow is gonna be all automated. Yes. Sorry, I, I thought I might have cut out for me for a moment. That might've been my connection, I'm not sure. But continue, please, sorry. Yeah, so I was saying tomorrow is going to be all automation from the mm -hmm. beginning to the end because we will be able to get all this information through AI. So this is basically the AI part. And then the NFT comes when uh, we will uh, finalize the verification of the uh, of the uh, job seeker or the freelancer. And then we enable the mint button for him to be able to mint his NFT and then push that to the marketplace. Got it. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you for that breakdown. I, I have a much better understanding now of how this works. Um, you know, it, you've mentioned user data before, and obviously blockchain technology allows uh, data to be public information. Uh, can you explain really briefly how GDPR and data protection on trust recruit is going to work? Um, specifically, like how will a how will user data be stored in a way where they ultimately have the right to be forgotten if they want? Yeah. Uh, so the way it works, no, is that uh, we don't store any data and we don't control it. People uh, submit their information. They are the ones, uh, once verified, the information still belongs to them. And they are the ones who submit it to the blockchain and mint the NFT. And so they are the ones who decide how they want it to be displayed on the platform itself. 
there are a number of parameters which people can set as to who can see who cannot uh, for instance if i work for kpmg and uh, i don't want my employer to know that i'm you know in the job market for uh, for jobs uh, i can put those filters and i can put filters on industries i can put filter on number of other uh, you know specifics and uh, if i wanted to leave the network i simply could uh, you know uh, nobody can stop because it's your nft it's in your wallet you decide what you want to do and you come and you append more information and you get your nft enriched or likewise if you decide not to add more information so everything is pretty much in the user's control they decide how they want to control it we don't and we don't see it that's amazing very cool um and tell us a bit about the design of your AI engine and how that works and how many developers are working on it and do they have experience working with and developing AI? Yes, so the AI uh, at a very high level, I just keep giving this example, is pretty <laughs> much like, you know, uh, dating apps, how people get matched, right? Uh, mm. You know, you have profiles, uh, you know, bases, uh, certain parameters, you know, likes, dislikes, location, you know, etc. And uh, the uh, AI engine works on very similar, you know, algorithm, where in we have the job seeker with certain criteria, and then there are employers or recruitment firms who have specific criteria of how they want the employer uh, or potential uh, employer to be. So the matches are made basis this and in terms of the actual work of the, you know development uh, this basically the large set of data modeling which has been going on for almost like a year now and these are people who have built for us various other AI platforms so this is a, a blockchain AI and IoT intersection for the supply chain industry which the same team has built so these are people who have credible experience in terms of building uh, products for AI who are now building the AI engine for us. Awesome. Yeah. And again, thank you for that high level explanation. Um, the <laughs> comparing it to like uh, Tinder dating app really helped me, helped me make sense of it in my mind. Um, I read in your white paper that individuals are able to sell a fraction of the resume. What is what does that look like, and what are some benefits of using this? Yes. So what happens is people come and they uh, reach the stage of minting the NFT. Once they mint the NFT, there are a number of things they can do. One, uh, obviously, they can set a price. So there's a there are two kinds of AI on the platform. One AI is for matching. The other AI, which uh, isn't talked much about, is actually the price recommendation. So the price recommendation range again comes from the AI basis a number of data points which you're looking out. Uh, you know, from a variety of sources. Process. And uh, basis, I'd imagine there's a system analyst with 15 years of experience. He means uh, he or she means their NFT, and uh, that NFT's price should be let's say fifteen thousand uh, dollars. So anywhere between you know twelve thousand five hundred to seventeen thousand five hundred or something would be the rough range which the AI would give, and then they can decide. The other uh, obviously advanced option is once you get a certain price, then you go to the marketplace and you are able to auction and then during that auction process you are again able to reset the price and get it closer to what the market would uh, sort of pay for it and uh, whilst you are doing all this and you are set your price that's when you can also decide to fractionalize your nft so imagine your uh, nft final price is twenty thousand dollars now uh, for that twenty thousand dollars you could break it down into as many smaller fractions so imagine you know a hundred dollars two hundred dollar fractions so you break down that entire twenty thousand dollars into two hundred dollars a small fractions and then you put these fractions in the marketplace for sale now uh, you can decide how many you know fractions you want to sell you know imagine uh, you want to keep 50 percent always in your custody remaining 50 percent you want to uh, have it in the marketplace so those 50 percent can be acquired by let's say recruitment firms like high quality recruitment firm who are 
always seeking good quality talent and exclusive access early access where uh, there is a opening position they are the ones who want to fill it first and so if they have access to some high quality candidates they are the ones who are able to fill that position and so what they would like to do is they would like to buy fractions of this buying does two things for them first obviously it gives them exclusive access so imagine uh, again going back to the kpmg example so kpmg has a requirement for a senior uh, finance director or legal counsel and this is one of those people in the marketplace who's nft fractions uh, recruitment firm has bought so they can very quickly fill that position so that's point number one point number two is that because uh, of that twenty thousand dollars worth of entire nft 50 percent fractions are with them so which means ten thousand dollars now viewing of resume nft always uh, comes at a cost uh, to the jobs uh, you know uh, uh, recruiter or the employer and so this money is obviously coming off the subscription plan so imagine for viewing one uh, of these resumes the cost is two dollars so out of that two dollars now uh, you know one dollar is going to go to the job seeker one dollar is going to the recruitment firm because the recruitment firm now owns 50 percent of the fractions so owing fractions helps in two ways one you get exclusive access two you uh, are also still getting paid whenever the uh, nft is being viewed interesting that's a very cool feature um and by the way is yeah that's i i would have never thought of something like that and i'm curious to know if this platform is currently live like are, are users able to come and uh, submit their information and mint resumes yes 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 so platform was built for almost like uh, 12 months and then we ran a, a rigorous uh, you know bug bounty and then we did a security audit and after all of that we went live in february uh, this year and uh, so people can basically come oh, sorry sorry no go ahead finish your thought yeah so people can basically come they can you know uh, submit their information in their nft and you know do all the things that i was talking about a little while ago on the platform obviously right now it's all test tokens and test network uh, but i think as soon as we actually deployed on the main net there will be cost at least uh, for the employers to uh, obviously be on a subscription plan right now it's for people to just come and play around with it Understood. And is there going to be any cost for an individual to come and submit their in information and ultimately mint an NFT of the resume? No, no. The only cost that the job seeker would incur is when they're submitting the information, minting the NFT. So basically the gas fees at that point, that's all. Understood. And you guys are on Ethereum. Uh, do you anticipate gas prices being an issue? Yeah. Uh, Honestly, nobody has an answer to this question, to be honest. But uh, having said that, what we are trying to do is uh, we are in conversations with Polygon at this point, and we are also looking to see if we can host there. So we've been uh, in advanced discussion with their tech team for the last week or so now. Great. Yeah. Um, yeah Polygon would be nice, especially for the smaller, the smaller guys that don't want to pay the Ethereum gas fees. But I also understand wanting to be on Ethereum. That's where most of the action is happening. Yes. Yeah, I wanted to talk a, a more about, well, actually, I wanted to kind of shift gears for a moment here and talk about the TRT token and how it relates to your overall ecosystem in terms of its utility. Yes, so uh, TRT actually is a real fuel for this entire ecosystem. Uh, basically, that's one of the key entry points. So there are uh, other ways also where people can participate. So especially uh, employers, there's an option where they can come and you know buy tokens with Fiat and then use the utilities on the platform. But otherwise, uh, uh, most people would prefer to have TRT as a token and then buy or use the services. And if you're using Using fiat, obviously, it comes at a uh, you know extra cost. But when you're using the token, the discount is about twenty percent. So uh, I think it's a preferable method. Now, coming to the ecosystem itself, uh, you know, right from our various fees or you know, uh, you know, the rewards and other things on the ecosystem, everything is in TRT. So uh, the token is uh, basically uh, how you would be able to use the services on the platform. Understood. So you can't use any service on the platform without having TRT token. Am I correct in understanding that? <laughs> 
Yes, yes, yes. So if you are, uh, uh, let's say, uh, a non-crypto or a fiat um, sort of person coming to the ecosystem, you can come to the platform uh, via fiat and then buy the TRT tokens and then, you know, buy the services on the platform. Uh, but without TRT, using the platform is something that's not possible. Got it. And can you give us a high level overview of the tokenomics? Yeah, so the tokenomics, uh, you know, uh, 10 billion tokens in all, uh, out of which uh, 3.2 billion is what we are, uh, you know, uh, offering during this uh, token sales offering uh, period. And then there are 40%, uh, percent, which is like 4 billion, which is there for uh, community, you know, all the various activities that we are going to do uh, in terms of the community overall. And then the remaining uh, is a split between uh, future development and the team that we are going to expand and the current team, which is about uh, 15%. And then we have have uh, advisors for about 5%. So that's the overall split. And the team and the advisors have a very long vesting uh, schedule. It's about uh, two and a half years. Uh, those who are uh, joining during these early stages, they still have a vesting period, but the vesting periods are, uh, you know, not as high as uh, those which are for, you know, the core team. So the vesting period for people who are investing are about a year. You know, obviously, uh, there's a uh, initial clip of three months, and then you start to get uh, every month. Uh, this is for this particular round. For the next round, which is starting in about five days, the cliff is only one month, and then uh, you again are uh, getting uh, everything uh, in your uh, wallets by the end of the year. And then for the final round, it is 50%, and the remaining 50% over six months. So that's how the token is split. Now, in terms of the actual, uh, you know, mechanics of the token, I mean, it's a deflationary, uh, you know, token economy model and so what we're trying to do is uh, take almost 5 billion tokens out of circulation in the longer term so 10 billion is the total supply out of that 5 billion is going to be taken out and the way it's going to be taken out is 10% uh, of the quarterly profits are towards buying back and you know burning and the burning uh, mechanism is also slightly different so instead of just burning and finishing them we are actually using that amount to add liquidity on Uniswap. So it is, you know, while it's burning, it is also adding liquidity. So this is how we have basically structured the token economics. Got it. And everyone has shared the tokenomics screenshots in the main chat. I've also shared a screenshot of the roadmap. So definitely go and check that out. Um, that was very thorough. Thank you for breaking that down for us. <clears throat> sure. Um, is, is there a buy sell tax, by the way? And I'm not sure if you mentioned that. No, there isn't. Got it. And tell us about your plans for governance and decentralization of the project. So I, I see that you have it broken down into early days, semi-decentralization, and then complete decentralization. How far out do you see each of those phases and um, what do each of those phases look like? Yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, this is very fluid at this stage. Uh, in a, it's a, a conceptual idea that we have put in, in the white paper because we want to move in that direction. In terms of the actual timeline when this is going to happen, uh, I think the first year or so is when things are going to really be set in motion and it's going to be solidified. Only then I think we'll be in a position where we start to devolve some of these responsibilities to the community. And I think overall in about two years time or so, we hope to reach that point where at least 80% of the decisions are taken by the community. And then some of these 20% come still back to the core team. And maybe there's a veto at some point, which is required. But generally, that is how we are looking to uh, set up a governance. Got it. And how is your private round currently going? How many wallets were listed for that? Um, how many? And uh, what was the what is the maximum contribution amount per wallet? Yes. So I mean, I'll uh, have to check the exact numbers from you know the team. But uh, the last that I remember was about uh, two thousand wallets that I remember, and uh, the maximum contribution was about thirty seven k from somebody. Uh, overall, uh, we now have six hundred and one k. 
and uh, yeah i mean the soft cap is uh, 2 mil and uh, uh, you know i think the round is uh, obviously coming to an end so we have seen a flurry of activities you know in the last 4 5 days you know uh, so the buying has gone up uh, i guess because it's 62.5% discount right now maybe that is what is uh, causing this spike so we hope that you know this is going to continue at least for the next uh, week or so till we end this round so um, you know that's where we are at this point yeah and it's obviously it's currently running to those that would want to invest do they need to be whitelisted what what do they need to do in order to contribute to this private line yes yes so what happens is people come to the platform and uh, you know obviously they submit basic information and they are able to proceed but uh, the token transfer happens uh, when the whitelisting process is completed so as soon as you uh, finish the initial round you are encouraged to submit all your uh, kyc information because kyc happens in parallel and uh, once the kyc and other things are done you know in terms of whitelisting the wallet that's when the token transfer would eventually be uh, executed sorry i i did this thing where i mute my mic and then i forget that it's muted um <laughs> No, thank, you the, thank you for the private round information. Uh, as for the pre-sale and public rounds, when are those taking place and what would be the soft cap and hard cap for those two respectively? Yes, so the next round starts uh, on 5th of April and uh, the token price would uh, go up you know as i mentioned uh, the current price is discounted by 62.5% uh, and uh, next round is going to be 0 0.0032 and finally 0 0.004 is going to be the price uh, the hard cap overall is uh, you know 10 million and the round uh, caps for the next one i think is about 3 million and the last one is 3.5 if i'm not wrong Understood. You mentioned in your white paper that you've applied for a crypto license. For those of us that yes. don't know what that, like, what exactly is that? I've never heard of that before. Okay, so whenever you are holding custody of uh, funds of somebody you know on the platform uh, you're supposed to uh, acquire a license so what that means is that uh, you know and uh, uh, we've taken a lot of legal opinion and i think uh, it's a little bit of unclear and since it was unclear we said okay you know what we are still anyway going to get a license to make sure we, you know we clear that basic hurdle and uh, on the platform what happens is people come they buy the subscription plan which means they money is uh, there logged in the wallet technically they bought the service so there is no custody of the you know of their money or tokens or funds but you know uh, it can be treated that we are holding their money uh, whilst the services haven't been consumed and so we decided it to be proved, uh, that it was prudent that we actually get a license where we say okay we are holding somebody's money and therefore we have this license to hold their money and that is the reason why we have applied for a license and who who where is that where is that coming from can you repeat that oh where is yeah. it coming from it's coming from the estonian uh, you know regulatory body got it got it and that's where you guys are based in estonia or you said yes you're based in yes no, no we're based in estonia yeah estonia but you have offices in you have an office in new york city as well yes <laughs> Yes, New York and then San Francisco, uh, London, uh, uh, Paris, Leela is based, and then the development center is in Delhi. Understood. So you have quite a few offices. Um, how big is your team? Can you give us a breakdown? Of your team? Yes, so we are like 17 people now. And, uh, you know, obviously this doesn't include, uh, you know, me, uh, Leela, Preeti, uh, and, uh, you know, two other board members. But 17 members are those who are actually, uh, you know, involved in terms of the development and marketing activities. Got it. And oh, would you say you, or excuse me, who are some major industry partners that you guys have onboarded so far? 
so these are recruitment firms some of the top notch recruitment firms in europe and uh, in terms of the actual business model we decided uh, that uh, we would onboard people from europe you know especially the recruitment partners uh, and the basic reason was of proximity that you know we have a strong presence uh, in europe and the company is also there and because these partnership models are based on one on one you know uh, sales pitching and you know uh, conversation it's not like you do online marketing and get them uh, therefore we decided in the early stages uh, for the next uh, you know couple of months we will onboard partners from europe and once you know uh, we go public that's when we start uh, opening offices so i think the next plan obviously is to open office in asia because asia for us is a very big market uh, especially singapore uh, region is uh, from where we are looking to expand further and uh, for that uh, you know we first wanted to solidify in europe but in terms of the actual users of the platform they are basically global so you know there is no restriction but our approach has been that you know we will focus more in terms of getting recruitment partners in europe because that's much easier for us to acquire at this point got it understood um, and you, your team is docs obviously correct yes 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 what do you guys have planned for phase 2 development So phase two, there are a number of things. Uh, you know, key is the AI engine because AI uh, is one of the most complex parts. You know, uh, even Google doesn't get it right, even after all these years of R and D and money at their disposal. So uh, AI is something which we have been very heavily focused on, and uh, we have close to ninety five percent accuracy. So in terms of uh, how AI works, AI works on probability, and you know, ninety nine percent, ninety eight percent. I mean. those are uh, you know there can be a major difference so uh, imagine you're driving uh, uh, you know uh, driverless car right and the 98% and a 99% could you know basically uh, there would be a consequence in terms of whether the car is going to crash or not crash right so uh, the probability of uh, the car sensing something on the road and deciding that it's uh, you know a, a risk and the car has to brake Uh, is all driven by these algorithms whether it is 98% or 99 so i think we are getting that closer to uh, you know closer and closer to one that is where i would say majority of our work is going to go uh, as we progress uh, in terms of the actual platform uh, per se you know uh, we are looking at social aspects of uh, you know uh, including the community certain you know uh, ideas on uh, voting and reputation of members members helping each other so we have number of ideas about the social aspect which we are obviously in the early phases of uh, you know uh, starting the development so that's uh, uh, something which is uh, going to be out there in the quarter number three. Uh, of this year uh, whereas the other bits obviously are going to be an ongoing development great great awesome and tell us briefly about your referral program yes so the referral program uh, is uh, something where people can come and invest a certain amount yeah, the threshold obviously is $1000 uh, so anybody can come and buy tokens for as low as $100 uh, but once you cross that $1000 threshold is when you actually become eligible for uh, the referral program so you uh, get a specific code and using that code uh, anybody who buys tokens you get 5% Uh, but also the person gets one percent, and then uh, the person can get their own unique code which they can forward, and they start making five percent. So it's basically like a cycle. You know, you just keep passing it on and accumulating the benefits of it. Got it. Um, I wanted to circle back to the empty resumes and um, get a better idea of how prices are determined for each like viewing an NFT. Right. Uh, obviously, the information is hidden until the employer or recruiter. pays for the nft or pays for the fraction or buys a fraction of the nft like how does the market determine um what the price is going to be for any given um any NFT. given resume Yes yes so uh, as i mentioned there are two ways one is the ai uh, which is going to actually look at various pointers so 
again i'll you know walk you through under the hoods of how the ai works in this case so what is happening is imagine i am a system analyst at uh, one of the leading firms so uh, bases my resume and my location so i am in london you know in the capital markets 15 years of experience system analyst so something like that and uh, when i have my resume out there this is going to get matched with various people you know in similar uh, you know job context in different locations and then normalize also to let's say if i'm based in london then in london and uh, accordingly is going to throw up a range that you know your resume we feel should be anywhere between this to this so uh, then it gives the option uh, then it gives the ability to the job seeker to decide what should be the price and uh, they can decide it and they can move on where they can also auction and during the auction process again the prices are reset based on what the market is willing to pay for a specific nft and then once that happens uh, that's when they are able to list it and uh, you know obviously fractionalize it as i mentioned uh and then list it got it so the ai algorithm will, oh excuse me so the ai algorithm will match you up based on your credentials with the respective recruiter and will list your nft simply based on supply and demand no 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 so the ai is going to match you against your peer uh, you know who have similar experience uh, in same geography but also different geography and then come up with a normalized range of what the uh, resume nft should be priced in your geography for your experience understood and would you say you have any major competitors in the space projects that are doing something similar or are you the first of your kind so we uh, are the first of our kinds so, uh, you know we have definitely an early movers advantage that said uh, we definitely have competition but our competition is from the traditional players so you know the suite of products that we offer you know defi nft ai combined uh, none of the players that we have seen so there are people who are trying to do ai alone in terms of matching so as i mentioned the same uh, you know sort of dating app matching so that is one part of it then nobody is doing the nft or the defi part and definitely the online portals where people submit their information on such as indeed.com uh, they are the core platform on which uh, the natural discovery of talent happens so the job seekers meet uh, employers uh, on this two sided network and so that way that network directly competes with us but while it competes it actually is a feeder because a lot of these uh, recruitment uh, platforms especially tier 2 who use uh, indeed.com as a core feeder for for talent they can actually be our core partners because now what is going to happen is they will get a steady supply of uh, candidate but now instead of indeed.com where the information may not be accurate in our case it is 100% accurate so instead of going to indeed they can actually come to us and then indeed also at some point we feel uh, would benefit from partnering with us where their candidates can actually come to our platform and get themselves verified so they have more credibility on indeed dot com and we are trying similar thing actually with also linkedin where on linkedin uh, you know this whole uh, twitter thing where you get a verified blue tick uh, on your profile we are trying to uh, you know approach linkedin with the same thing where their candidates or you know people who have their profiles on linkedin uh, can have their profiles verified with this blue tick if they have gone through the you know the process on uh, trust recruit and get themselves this nft which uh, obviously just goes back to linkedin as a verified profile got it and how can you guys guarantee so, sorry go ahead yes yeah no how sorry with the example that i had just mentioned with linkedin basically the idea would be to partner with linkedin directly and offer that feature to all their customer base actually and uh, instead of trying to develop something from their side they will definitely rely on us to get that and it's going to be a white label uh, OEM uh, partnership that we're going to get with all those software companies same thing for microsoft also so we are discussing with them and see how we can kind of uh, see uh, how we can tag some uh, talents in their CRM for example with dynamics that they have today in which they have a lot of contact in here so knowing that those people has been verified by trust recruit um, as a white label 
is going to be something that they will definitely see a tremendous value on that. So uh, those kind of partnerships are going to be a big partner uh, for us and it's going to be uh, uh, during 2022 as soon as we will uh, finalize our fundraising. Great. Yeah, I mean, just to add on what Leela was saying, I mean, I, in terms of our uh, backgrounds, I know Leela mentioned about me as well, which is, you know, thanks, Leela. Uh, but we are primarily from the enterprise, uh, you know, uh, IT software sort of uh, is the industry, which means we have, uh, you know, a lot of friends, uh, our colleagues or classmates who work in these, uh, you know, so I went to Stanford and I have several of my Stanford alums who are working at, uh, you know, LinkedIn. My office in San Francisco, pretty much in the you know same you know you know five miles location. So you know uh, when we discuss with Microsoft or LinkedIn or something, there's like a context of you know having worked in the industry, and I think that's been very helpful in terms of explaining the value to some of these big enterprises. Uh, and you know we're pretty hopeful that uh, this is going to add a tremendous value not just to us but also to these uh, organizations. So when you tell your fellow Stanford alumni and uh, friends that work at LinkedIn about this trust recruit protocol you're building, what are the thoughts on it? I mean, they just find it uh, super fascinating because, uh, you know, especially a couple of the folks who are working at LinkedIn, I mean, the stats and which they are aware, like one people, uh, I mean, they just tell you stories, wild stories, which, you know, you're shocked to hear, uh, you know, uh, people can have like three or four different. Uh, profiles on LinkedIn, you know, uh, I don't know how they manage to do, uh, you know, such kind of things, but there are people, you know, there's like a whole marketing industry which runs on this and uh, they are obviously, you know, uh, facing this, uh, you know, nuisance and uh, they obviously want to have a solution which helps them and especially after Microsoft took over and the, you know, uh, funding issue obviously uh, went out of the equation, they have deep pockets now. So I think they're trying to build a product suit which is going to help them, you know, offer more value to their end clients. Great, yeah. Um, in regard to the TRT token, I wanted to circle back to that. Are you going to be offering um, staking, liquidity pool incentives? Yes, yes. So staking, uh, yeah, I, I don't know how I missed it. Uh, so staking platform is getting developed. It's going to be deployed, uh, you know, so uh, it's going to be live at least a month and a half before because we're going to do a lot of uh, security testing and other things. But uh, when we go live, the platform for staking is also going to be live. And so people will have uh, the option if they wanted to stake at the time of uh, getting their tokens, they can do so. Great. And what kind of APYs can people expect? Uh, I mean, you know, it's not the right thing to put a number because obviously, you know, security. Uh, Sir, your, your mic kind of, I can't hear you very well. It's very muffled. Okay. Is it better now? Mm, I can hear. Yeah, your volume went down substantially, but I can still hear you. Okay. Is it good now? No, that's, per that's perfect. Okay, okay. So what I was saying is, you know, we have a benchmark uh, internally, but, you know, uh, because of securities laws, you know, it's not always advisable to give a number. But having said that, uh, it's in the vicinity of uh, double digits is what I can tell you, um, is what we are aiming to offer. Got it. And I know you mentioned Polygon integration but I feel like a lot of people that would want to use this platform would be deterred from doing so just because of the the gas fees on Ethereum. How far out do you see yourselves being available on, on excuse me being available on Polygon? So uh, we have initi initiated the technical conversations with them. So we are engaged with the technical team, and you know the team. Uh, we've known uh, you know the team for a very long time. Uh, so we've worked on several projects in the past. So we built like a fantasy sports platform on uh, on Polygon. So we have worked with the team, and so that part is easier. And uh, so therefore, the conversations have started, and, and uh, there's like a process of you know looking at the tech and trying to understand where all we are going to place and uh, you know uh, run the trials initially so that is the stage which is uh, going on right now and we are hoping this to get completed in about a week 
uh, thereafter the actual you know sort of modification also is going to be done in another week and then the integration so roughly i would say 3 weeks or 4 weeks max is when this is going to be on polygon as well if things go as per the plan you might be on the in an advertent mute once again no of course i am i would do that <laughs> twice you know not once but twice in a name eh? it's one of those days i tell you that um uh, you know you both have you both have had quite the lucrative careers i'm really impressed with both of you in in what you've done throughout your lives i'm curious to know what some past experiences and learning lessons you've taken from previous projects or previous ventures that you've been involved with and are applying it to the one you're working on today to make sure that it's a smooth success yeah uh that's a wonderful question no and uh, especially coming to crypto uh, you know uh, i've been active in this space uh, for a good 6 years now this is the seventh year in running and we have built so many projects that are some of them actually uh, did not go past beyond poc and then there are several projects which are actually live there's an exchange uh, which i was heading for almost like a year and a half which is you know based out of dubai and doing trading etc so uh, i mean a uh, number of things you know especially on the tech which is uh, you know sometimes difficult to explain um, how things in tech can suddenly go out of hand but i think we had some very solid learning uh, on how quickly blockchain evolves and how you have to continue to uh, sort of build it in a modular fashion that once things change you are still relevant and i think uh, that has been one of the key uh, in terms of a seamless landing for trust recruit uh, in terms of where we are today so the i mean i can go back 3 years ago when one of the decentralized exchanges which we were launching uh, the kind of issues because some of the protocol changes happened and then we had to literally work overnight uh, and it took us almost like 2 uh, weeks to again redo and then you know it was a massive testing cycle uh, it was just because uh, the team failed to sort of anticipate and uh, so i think we incorporated all of those learning into the platform this time so technologically i think uh, uh, we've been very very fortunate that the team has delivered a great product now in terms of the uh, market per se i think uh, things uh, where some of these things can go wrong when which i have seen with projects go wrong is how you positioning yourself how you are marketing or you are not doing enough marketing or you how you are not reaching out to the right uh, you know set of people and that is something we are very diligently following so those are the two i would say fundamental areas and then you know uh, things on security and other bits these are things which have now become part of the dna i mean especially uh you know after a year and a half of working in blockchain a lot of people just saw so much happening in this space that you know security is something which is totally embedded so you know nothing goes without a thorough uh, two times test so there are like two different teams uh, through which the product has to pass through and if there are any changes obviously they have to be incorporated and then run again so i would say some of these things have been uh you know very very useful uh, but this doesn't really apply if i look back to my corporate career where you know i was um, you know um, heading global operations out of uk and then elsewhere um, you know this is very different this is like a startup and they're taking it forward compared to a giant uh, enterprise but a lot of the fundamentals are still apply as to how you're thinking of the product how the product is going to be different which markets are you going to launch in how you going to think of the competition how big is the market size what would be the customer acquisition cost and how quickly can you acquire customers and then what is the next year challenge is going to look so some of those things i actually have obviously uh, been used uh, but then as i mentioned uh, various other factors in an enterprise to a startup are different well you certainly stand out in regard to most of the crypto projects <laughs> that i interview um you you guys <laughs> you both you both very well spoken and you seem to have um you seem to have a, a very competent approach from all angles you know not just tech not just marketing but everything in between um and you know before i get the community questions here i do see some hands up uh, i wanted to know really quickly uh, and I, i this almost 
I almost didn't ask this question because it, I feel like I already know the answer, but are you guys audited? Uh, is, are your contracts audited? And yes, so by who? yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. So it's a Prime of Felicitas. And then we are uh, in the process of getting audited by Certic as well. So we decided to have two, uh, again, as I mentioned. So internally also we have two teams who do that. And then we decided to have this uh, also done. So that is the reason why we're also doing a, an extra audit with Certic. Yeah, and the secur your security team also sounds quite impressive. It seems like you have quite a few people working on that end as well. Yes, yes. I mean, uh, we have two teams and the security is also one of the services which we offer as well, uh, as I explained. So we do it. Uh, so if you Google our name and then you look uh, for, for instance, even barter trade, that was the exchange. So, uh, you know, there are reports that we have published. So we've done security audit for, you know, various projects. We continue to do that. Yet we decided to have one more, uh, you know, as I mentioned. So we were looking at Hacken and Certic and then finally decided to get with Certic. Understood. Um, and uh, do you have any centralized exchange listings in the works? So we have like 10, uh, you know, uh, exchanges which are in the shortlist and we are in the process of, uh, you know, uh, conversations and due diligence with them. Uh, as I think out of these, we are planning to have uh, close to four as a final, you know, uh, listing at the time of going live. And then we will see. And the way we have structured is, you know, basically tier two and, uh, you know, uh, lower level tier ones is uh, what is our approach at this point. And then once we get listed, I think in two to three months' time, we will try to move up the ladder to some of the bigger exchanges. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, I'm going to move on to some community questions here, and then I will you know, follow up with some questions myself if there's still time. But I do see quite a few hands up. So let's start with Venice. Venice, go for it, man. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Noah. Actually, a couple of the questions... Right. Yeah, uh, actually, um, as we know that uh, I want to know that uh, are NFT owners allowed to attach royalties to their NFT? Uh, I mean, in order to gain uh, even after selling them. So uh, can they add our royalties to uh, get more attraction from people? Yeah, I mean, that's a wonderful uh, thought. I obviously uh, haven't thought about it, uh, but it seems like a good idea. I'm going to obviously take it back to the team to see if we can do something about it. But yes, right now we don't have royalties. The way it works is simply uh, people control it and the price of the NFT goes up based on the value of... So when people's experience go up, what they do is they would obviously go and add that information to the NFT. Uh, they would append that information, get a fresh NFT, and so fresh NFT would come at an increased uh, price. So that is how the value is going to go up. But in terms of royalty, you know, uh, I think that's an interesting angle to consider. Okay, great. And uh, as an NFT owner, uh, what are the requir requirements for me to uh, actually fractionalize my NFT and sell its part to uh, different users? Uh, basically, there's no requirement. I mean, you decide how many fractions you want to, uh, you know, turn it into and then how much of that uh, you want to sell. Uh, we obviously uh, never recommend you sell more than 50% of it because obviously you want to control, uh, you know, your, your professional profile. Um, but then it's up to people how much they want to sell. Uh, obviously, there are going to be pointers in terms of how much is recommended. Uh, and as I mentioned, fractions could be anything you decide, uh, you know, uh, whatever the minimum denomination. Okay. And uh, what benefits do employers or recruiters receive from control of resume NFTs? I mean, uh, how can this help them on their goal of having a better staff and maybe an overall better company? Yeah, uh, the whole idea is for them to get these verified uh, profiles where obviously, uh, you know, some of the due diligence, the manual due diligence or what they do with the third parties, that is something which we are taking care. But the actual human intervention of seeing a person and trying to make sure that 
how am I going to enjoy, you know, working with this person when he's going to be sitting next to me, you know, in a week's time or a month's time. So the cultural fit and some of the other angles of, you know, understanding the values and ethics and, you know, all of that. So there's a lot of softer skills and assessment in terms of the actual cultural fit. That is a still, uh, you know, part of the decision making, uh, you know, matrix. What we are taking care is the pure play, uh, you know, information pertaining to uh, the credentials that they are submitting the number of years of experience uh, so those are the areas where we are focusing on to give them a valuable uh, you know time saving and cheaper uh, outcome okay and uh, i think uh, i read uh, somewhere on your white paper your website that uh, companies and recruiters uh, pay a subscription fee to view the nft right yes okay so uh, uh, how much how much would this fee cost and the payment uh, the nft owners receive per view will be a percentage of this subscription fee and can this fee be paid only with a trt token or uh, can we also use fiat for this kind of thing <laughs> Yes. So, uh, one, I mean, uh, what we are looking at is more or less like $200 uh, subscription fees, more or less on a monthly basis. So, uh, this is the level that we have. Uh, in terms of, uh, can you repeat the second part of your question? Sorry, I think Sorry, I missed it. I was saying that uh, the payment the NFT owner is received. Yes, uh, okay, got it. Of this, so you uh, mentioned whether they can do it in fiat or not. So yes, they can come to the platform via fiat, uh, but then they have to buy the TRT token because the entire platform works on uh, TRT tokens only. So either they own TRT or uh, you know they come to the platform uh, by buying TRT somewhere else or they can use. Uh, so we are also building a sort of a, a mini OT see where people can actually come with uh, you know other cryptos and buy uh, trt or they can come to the platform with fiat and then uh, buy trt so those are the ways by which they can enter the ecosystem yeah and uh, second uh, and, and there was uh, one more part of my question uh, i was saying that uh, will will the nft owners receive uh, payment uh, any percentage from those subscription fee or yes 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 so the uh, percentage as such is you know I, I can give you rough numbers uh mostly uh 90 percent of the subscription fees is directly going to the job seekers right and 10 percent uh you know is what is going to be administration charges to maintain the platform Okay, and uh, is there any way that a test recruit verify that the data provided uh, in a given resume is real and a person is not impersonating someone else? And uh, I mean, how is the personal data of individuals who post a resume on test recruit uh, protected and safety issues uh, addressed for both employees and employer? So, so uh, yes, yes. So, yes, so uh, what? So what happens is sorry that uh, so you, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, you were saying ahead. something. I was saying, I'm sorry. Was... No, no, I was saying just go ahead. I'm sorry for interrupting. Okay, okay. So uh, people uh, come to the platform, they uh, submit their information, and then once the verification process starts, uh, there are a number of checks. Uh, initially, the check is on the academic credentials, and then it's on the uh, experience and other things which people uh, submit. And uh, we have a team which, uh, you know, obviously will be speaking to the uh, person who submitted the details uh, to obviously do the actual physical verification as well which obviously you mentioned whether they were impersonating or not so uh, currently it is structured in two uh, you know two different parts one is uh, completely online where we are having these api calls and the other part is manual where we are checking one the number of years of experience and other bits and then the person itself so that is how we are trying to make sure that the person who says they who that this is what they are and then with all the experience that they say they have uh, are the ones who have the ability to finally win the uh, sort of NFT. And the only reason why somebody will go through this trouble 
to sort of pass it and move forward is they are uh, you know job market ready which means uh, you know tomorrow if somebody wants to hire them they are absolutely ready for that there is no uh, you know long drawn process of multiple interview rounds and what not it's very easy process from there and more than that even if they don't get hired every viewing of the uh, nft is still learning them so that is the incentive for them to go through this process of course it's all based on their consent all we are trying to do is uh, cut the time for the employer to hire somebody okay that's really great uh, you answered everything every, everything i got everything uh, uh, you 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 completely uh, Uh, answered my all queries and uh, thank you so much welcome i'm happy thanks venus good, good questions man um next one is uh, dan mola dan you there you have to unmute your mic Okay, next question is from Big Justice. I saw your hand up for a while. Big Justice, you there? You can hear me, guys. Yeah. Okay, I my question for you guys is common issues of investors are holding the token for short-term value and do not understand the long-term reward. Is it possible for you to give them some reason why should they owe and buy your token over time? That's my question. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, it's a wonderful question. So uh, there are two angles to it. Uh, one is uh, obviously uh, the technical reason why somebody would hold. So technical reasons, you know, uh, we have number of things pertaining to the platform. You know, uh, not just the value of the token tied to the ecosystem we are building, uh, but also people can uh, stay there long term. And I mentioned double digit uh, APYs for staking. So staking is going to be like again, don't. hold me for that double digit i keep saying that uh, but that's basically the aim we are aiming to offer uh, so these are going to be 3 months uh, pools and then these are going to be repeated every quarter so that's one side but more importantly fundamentally you know we have to understand where the value the actual value of trt is coming from where is trt deriving its value and trt is deriving its value from all of us so we are the ones who are contributing the information we are the ones who actually continue to accumulate experience every single day so tomorrow we wake up we have another day we are accumulating that experience so as we continue to accumulate experience and as uh, you know our resumes get enriched all that info uh, all that value is then coming back to the trt because obviously trt is deriving its value from all these different uh, nfts that are there on the platform so uh, why should anybody hold the trt token on the longer term i think that's one of the reasons because unlike all the other things people's experience is always going to go up there's no way the experience is going to come down so you work for one year you experience is 100% going to increase and therefore that value is going to get added to your uh, you know uh, nft resume and the value of the nft resume is going to go up and therefore the linked value of the trt is also going to go up right so that is how we see it and therefore uh, you know uh, that's one of the very strong reasons why somebody should be holding it for a longer term okay and i want to say how do you guys want to generate revenue for your projects and how can it be beneficial for both you and your and your and the investors and what market structure are you guys using to attract investors and to give them more confidence about your project so one is revenue how we thinking of revenue what is the value we are offering to uh, both investors and job seekers right those are two questions okay okay Yeah those were, okay. those were his yeah. questions <laughs> right so uh, the way we are trying to offer value to both uh, job seekers and uh, employers as i mentioned is uh, i think i'm just getting it modeled uh, i think uh, you'll have to repeat the question sorry i said uh, what market structure do you guys have in place to attract investor confidence and and to give them more 
more more confidence that your project is going to move forward that's my question okay market structure so uh market structure i think uh, there are two things which you are doing one the partnerships that we have in place are primarily from uh, the recruitment firms and the way we are approaching uh, and leela mentioned about linkedin and, and microsoft uh, our approach is primarily to get on board uh, initially it firms so uh, the business model that we have uh, in that business model the core uh, you know uh, acquisition strategy uh, is that we are going to go after it firms who understand technology and in terms of the user base that we are trying to acquire and again this uh, obviously is just the initial phase because uh, you know we want to get the project kick started and therefore the user base that we are targeting right now is purely people who understand uh, crypto or technology because we feel it's going to be much easier explaining to them uh, you know what is nft how to fractionalize auction you know ai and all of these things i mean to us it looks very easy because we're doing it but i understand it might not be very easy uh, to bring it to the next level so we uh, are planning to acquire uh, these gender category of users initially but then you know six months down the line as i mentioned the asia office which we are planning to open that's when the actual implementation of uh, more mainstream is going to happen so we are looking at banks we are looking at uh you know number of other institution you know and industries to focus on besides just uh it uh that's basically the plan and so in terms of the investor confidence i think uh the plan how we are approaching the markets uh, uh you know uh, should be you know an indicator okay i'm going to say this project is going to move forward oh thank you for the answer thank you <laughs> thank you uh next question is from Vincent Ross Vincent you there buddy Okay next question is going to be from Dr Aisha Thank you Noah I have few questions uh first on your white paper I have read that the only new verified information can be added while none of the old approved details can be edited altered or deleted it caught me wondering that what if user want to change his address or country where user is residing i want to know how will user be able to update these kind of information on trust recruit platform yeah so uh, prior to them being able to submit that information there are two things one is prior to them being able to submit this information this information is going to be checked multiple times both by the internal team who are going to do the verification process and also the person who submits that information so chances of somebody uh sort of submitting an information which is not correct and uh, that you know going through that verification process and clearing it are extremely low that's point number one point number two if that happens in the rarest of the rare cases uh they always have the option to go back and add this fresh information and mint a fresh nft pertaining to the new information which they can always do once they're adding more uh, you know experience uh, to their uh, professional career they can come back and add that information and create a fresh nft but also they can go back and uh, add this information and fresh nft can be shoot against it okay got it that makes sense okay on your white paper uh, <clears throat> excuse me i've read that the trust recruit platform has a built in model where the where the moment an employer clicks and views job seekers resume the job seeker gets paid in the native trt coin Uh, i want to know that what amount of trt coins will be paid to the job seeker and also i was wondering the job seeker who have more job experience and skills will receive more trt coins as compared to others or it will depend on how much native token job seeker is holding in his wallet no it's not going to depend on how many tokens they are holding it's going to depend on the uh, value of the nft which and the value of the nft comes from experience of course but 
you know in some cases somebody is uh, super smart uh, with number less number of experience, years of experience they could still have an nft which is priced higher so the viewing would come uh, you know based on the uh, value of the nft and this is uh, you know so what we are trying to do is mimic real world uh, you know in real world if i have to have access to somebody uh, who has you know very rich and valuable experience you know so i have to really you know pay uh, you know to really high quality recruiters to get access to them and the so same is going to be the case here so here you have somebody whose uh, resume is valued highly so the cost of being able to access that also goes up that's how it works and uh, yes the trd token is how the value is going to get accumulated so anybody who's views the resume uh, their trd tokens are going to get depleted and the person whose resume is seen uh, they basically earn the tokens okay that's great okay uh, each profile of the job seeker will also have rating in stars i was wondering that what factors will determine the rating of a job seeker so the job seekers rating and this is something i was alluding to a little while ago uh, on the social aspect so this is going to work a number of matrix uh, you know uh, there's going to be a community aspect where people will uh, you know see the conduct of and conduct is not just conduct on the platform it is generally imagine i am somebody who acts as a mentor i'm helping people i'm you know helping people do various things both on the platform and otherwise and so we we are trying to uh, see how we can use this value and start to give people rating and uh, try to sort of encourage good behavior in everybody on the platform and so people want to earn more you know uh, rating uh, you know uh, points and uh, we are devising a structure where you know the more uh, you know of these ratings you have you start to accumulate tokens as rewards for that because remember i mentioned we have 40% of these tokens allocated only for the activities and so this is one of the key things which we are planning to implement uh, in the quarter 3 okay and uh, will companies or corporate recruiters will also have ratings for job seekers to yes. have a better idea of the company Yes, yes, yes. That is also the plan because uh, you, you know the ratings are going to help people determine whether they want to proceed with somebody on uh, in terms of the interview itself. So, one side is yes, the recruiter gets five, six shortlisted resumes who they want to straight away interview. Uh, you know, call for interview. But importantly, whether the job seeker also wants to get interviewed by the same people. So, imagine if they have one the review system, two they heard from somebody that. you know this company culture is not great or doesn't fit with my working style and therefore this is not where i want to work so you know uh, those all factors can then come into play and people can make decisions based on that okay awesome thank you thank you for answering all my questions yep thanks hey great questions aisha um we have a team member that has a question jerry smith go for it man Hi, uh thanks for taking my question. So, um all the examples you've listed have been like high level uh well-paid and or, or well-seasoned individuals with verifiable experience uh with companies. What about uh gig workers uh or so it sounds like you've got an awesome thing going, but the little like is it geared only toward the higher end jobs or do you plan to implement something along the way that picks up those uh gig workers or those uh part-time workers that that don't necessarily get a huge amount of feedback for instance proofreaders or uh artists fiverr has a problem with many plagiarizers so your op- your platform offers relief from that but where the gig workers don't really have so much like what do you do 
Yes, uh, great question, Jerry. Thanks for asking, honestly. Uh, we have built this platform and it's very, very modular and scalable. And uh, we never thought of this idea, uh, but we came across a company which is uh, Y Combinator, you know, incubated and a very successful company. I think the last I saw the valuation is about uh, three or four billion dollars. They are purely uh, you know getting companies connected to these gig workers and we are in advanced conversation with them and trying to partner with them to get their uh, gig workers come on the platform create their you know uh, profiles and then be available for hire and uh, we can definitely do that on the platform so people can come on the platform they can create their you know uh, profile or resume whatever we want to call that and then have it for people to basically hire them you know for short term uh, you know uh, goals so we are very geared for that kind of scenario that's really exciting uh that's really good to hear thank you yeah thanks yeah good question jerry that was, that was a nice one um said rahmat next up yeah thank you noah so on your white paper, I've read you also may have mentioned that uh, users can create multiple NFTs of the resume. So I was wondering, will there be any limit uh, on how much NFTs um, users will be able to create or mint? I mean, uh, we haven't kept a limit, to be very honest, but uh, it all depends that people. So what happens in real world is that you wanted to uh, create your NFT for a specific industry. So people create multiple resumes, right? Uh, you know that I want to apply for this role. So therefore, my resume should look like this. I want to apply for this role. My resume should look like this. Of course, the basic information which is going to get captured and is going to get verified is going to be all the same and then they have the ability uh, to uh, sort of uh, mint NFT based on certain parameters so that it is more appealing to a specific industry. Yeah, got it. So users will be able to create their NFTs. So it got me thinking that will corporate recruiter or companies uh, will be also be able to create their NFTs of the company mission or profile or even post job openings in the form of the NFTs. Will it be possible? <laughs> Wow. I mean, that's, again, a wonderful thought. No, I did not uh, think of that. I mean, none of us in the team, uh, you know, I think uh, we can definitely see how that might play out, uh, you know, uh, honestly, but that's not something we considered. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking on the board my mind okay moving to my last question i was wondering that have you any plan in future to offer online uh, uh, tests like personality test aptitude test and skill test and uh, as well as emotional test uh, services which can helpful for uh, the recruiters and as well as for the candidates <laughs> Yes, so uh, one is my personal side. I can't resist not giving that because you know I've uh, you know taken multiple psychometric tests and other things, and uh, I think the uh, outcome is at best uh, you know average. You know, it's never perfect. To be very honest, I've recruited people. So I was in UK. Uh, you know, when I was recruiting people, uh, there was one of these tests where people also went through psychometric tests, and you know, uh, I almost did not hire somebody and finally ended up hiring and they were the best person in my team. So uh, the outcome uh, is something which I'm not entirely convinced. That's one thing. Two, uh, you know, this is something which is being offered honestly uh, as one of the services by the third party service providers I mentioned earlier. And, uh, you know, we have been considering whether we should do that or not. So this is something more about uh, the core product offering than the actual whether we can do it or not. Because I think, uh, you know, all that is required is we will uh, have to partner with some of these uh, companies which run this test. And whatever is the score, that comes to us. And then we just help that uh, being put into the platform as an NFT. So that part is uh, straightforward. But I think what is not straightforward is whether that uh, should be something we should get into an offer. Uh, so I think we are still debating, to be very honest, internally. Yeah, it makes sense. Got it. Uh, yes, and then score can also be on the users or uh, job seeker profiles as well. Thank you. Thank you for answering. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the question, Said. 
Uh, next up, we got Keith Crypto. Guys, when you raise your hand, I unmute you, and then you have to unmute yourselves in order to talk. So, Chief Crypto, I haven't heard from you. Let's go go to BB Adu. BB, you have the you have a you have a question. Okay, so I think that's it for questions, AMA questions. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Um, I really enjoy hearing about projects like yours. You, you guys are very thorough. You're very precise. You're doing everything on the marketing end, the the tech end, the security end. I mean, you guys are covering all fronts. If you can, leave us with a bang. Uh, give us a quick summary of who you are, what you're building, and why people should invest in your project. Give us a vision of the future. Yes. So what we're trying to do, honestly, is uh, one change the way the industry has been functioning for the last 25 years. So from the times when, uh, you know, people would walk into a job center, submit their resume, things change when, you know, the dot-com era and things went online. But since then, fundamentally, nothing has changed. And the system is primarily broken because people have to go to all these multiple places to be able to hire and it takes a lot of time. So we are fundamentally trying to change an industry which hasn't changed in 25 years. And in terms of the, uh, you know, our longer term plan, uh, we are definitely, you know, ambitious and we are trying to be one of the leading recruitment firms uh, helping people get hired online. That's our vision for a longer term. Fantastic. Well, yeah, thank you again. I will add, yeah. Maybe yeah. And I will add also something about um, sharing the value that we're going to create because uh, getting all those data regarding the resume should be shared by the different uh, uh, stakeholders like uh, job seekers, uh, freelancers, and employers. And I do think that this is definitely something that we're going to bring. So it's going to be the Web 3.0, a new way of future of recruitment. So this is how we're going to be maybe in one or two years. And depending on how we're going to be successful in signing our partnership, which is currently ongoing, and, and how we're going to be successful in getting additional features, uh, this is basically that. So let's imagine maybe within one or two years, uh, we can go and organize some fair um, uh, job for in the metaverse, for example, and being able to hire the different people through their avatars in the metaverse. This is basically what the uh, future of recruitment is going to bring. And this is what Trust for Cruise is about. Absolutely, Lila. And thank you for adding that. Uh, yeah, I think you guys are um, on the forefront of Web3. And you are, I, I haven't seen any project like this. So as far as recruitment goes, you seem to be the first ones from my experience that are doing what you're doing. And um, I think you have quite a impressive team and I'd be curious to see where you guys are at six months to a year from now. So if you ever want to come back and do a follow-up AMA with WhaleCoin Talk, I'd be happy to host you. Um, it's been a great pleasure speaking with you both today. Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to come back and share, you know, how things are at our end with the community. And uh, thank you for hosting us. Uh, no, it's been a pleasure, honestly. And some of the questions that we had from you and as well as, uh, you know, the members from the community, uh, I mean, uh, things we hadn't considered, I think I'm going back with a few of them, but also some of the questions were really, really good. So thank you so much for uh, this engagement. Yeah, my pleasure. And I, I feel the same way. I, I learned a lot from this AMA. This was, a, this was an interesting one for me. I was Googling stuff in between. Um, you were using terms <laughs> I've never heard of before. And I really, these are my favorite sorts of back and forth because I, I walk away with something as well. And I, um, it makes me a, a better host in the future. So th again, it's been a great pleasure. Thank you so much for being with us. And I uh, hope to hear from you guys soon. Thanks for having sure. us. Absolutely. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks. Yeah, take Bye. care. Bye-bye. Thank you.